Hey guys, I'm Walt K4 OGO. You know, for the longest time, I've been trying to find an antenna that I could operate on the beach, but not down by the water. As you know, I like to operate uh, right on the salt water with the counterpoise wires there, you know, basically kissing the, uh, the ocean or the salt water. Problem is, like most of the time in the summer during the uh, tourist season, it's almost impossible for me to operate at the beach because there's just so many people walking over top of my wires, my, uh, my coax, and what have you. So I kind of wanted something that I could get way back on the beach, away from people, and still get the advantage of being right there by the ocean and, um, and, and, and operate. Problem is, I, you know, I wanted something that really didn't have radials, but I didn't want a gimmick. You know, I, I don't, you know, you see, and I, I, I operate at home with what people call a gimmick, you know, a, a no radial vertical antenna. But I wanted something that, um, that, that honestly I could do. I mean, and I didn't want to, I want a vertical. I don't want to stretch out, a, you know, say a hamstick dipole or something like that because I'm losing that takeoff angle for DX that, that I really want there right beside the ocean. So after just, you know, scouring and looking for so long, I, yeah, I decided to take matters into my own hand and design something. And, and I came up with what I think is a pretty good solution. And I'm putting it together and, uh, and, and trying it. The problem is I, I, I want to have something that will fit on a 10-meter pole. I have a DX Commander 10-meter uh, pole at home. And I don't have that here. I'm in Poland right now, you know, for a few weeks working and I've got this big what I call the uh, the lab the antenna lab I have a garden backyard back garden and I wanted to build something but I do have a couple broken um, poles that have that I've been taping together and hacking together to use and I figured maybe I could piece these two things together and make a 10 meter pole well I've got something and I think it's going to work well as a matter of fact it worked real well and I want to share it with you stick around So after researching and, and tinkering and trying to lay things out to, for something that would work, I came up with what I'm going to call the K4OGO Coastal 20. <laughs> so uh, here it is. And what I'm thinking, well, and the reason I'm calling it 20, uh, because I'm going to be able to use it from 20 meters to 10 meters. That's really what I use for DX when I'm outside, you know, working portable during the daytime, it, it, you know, by the beach. So I called it the Coastal 20. Also, it's a little over 20 feet long. I know that's... Uh, and American measurements and uh, and some of you guys don't use feet and inches like we do in America. We'll catch up one day, I promise. I, I use the metric system all the time. But what I wanted to do is put this thing together and basically it's kind of like a random wire antenna. You know, my thoughts were that it would be, uh, you know, non-resonant so I wouldn't find any any points. It almost almost kind of like the Ribikoff antenna that I've built, which I really like as well. But something that was in the uh, like a random wire. But I also thought maybe I could have like a shortened off center fed dipole. That way I'm basically not using in, in the gimmick of uh, my coax as a, a as a counterpoise or, or anyway to counter the, the vertical. So I looked at it and I looked at, at different measurements and came up with you know 17.5 feet is non resonant and it would work as a as a basically random wire and also uh, 20 point5 feet overall so these two measurements really came back into what I was going to use for um, for my measurements you know I, I I banged this back and forth for the last couple of months I've been pinging my friend uh, Tim g5 tm asking him questions and he's and he, he gave me some really good advice one of the things he said use a choke I, my original sketch to him just had the uh, the unun there between the two of them. I played around with different ununs and, and decided that it would be a nine to one, and that's what I, I put on this thing and uh, and to get it to work. Um, my other thought pattern on this too was takeoff angles that you know for uh, to kind of make this similar in the characteristics of other verticals. So what I did, you know, like a, a near value for the overall length on this thing, I kind of looked at uh, 17 meters being basically like a halfway vertical, uh, 12 being a 5 eighths wave vertical, uh, 10 meters, three quarter wave vertical, and uh, 15 meters, uh, a little less, uh, less than a halfway vertical. You know, the other, the upper driven element, basically the near values of that would be uh, the 20 meter band would it'd almost be a quarter wave vertical. 
um, 15, it would be a 3 8 vertical, and then a 10 meter band would be a half wave vertical. So that's, that was my thought process when I was uh, designing and put this thing together. Um, and and the, here you go. What, here's what I did as far as getting a pole together. We're going to call it the Franken pole or the Frankenstein pole. And this is how I, I built the pole before I built the antenna. Okay, here's my uh, broken up poles that I'm going to uh, be using to make one big long pole out of. Um, you can see here, I'm just going to zoom in on it. That one, there's, that's tape where I repaired this one once before. Uh, the black pole's got some history, man. I tell you what, uh, actually, this is the pole. I uh, had this pole in Kauai, Hawaii, on the beach with me. Remember my first video for the channel. And uh, it's been uh, on the beach in Hawaii, uh, all over the Outer Banks of North Carolina, Virginia, here in Poland. And now uh, it's continuing to serve me. <laughs> I'm going to piece it together. And there's the other. That's the... Uh, seven meter pole that uh, broke off both of these wind storms got them here in Poland. it gets windy here that's some pretty serious wind but um yeah i'm gonna put these together make a franken pole out of them well with the pole put together and it it held up pretty well a lot of electrical tape and a lot of uh hacking and whacking together i put the antenna up on it here you go well there it is up in the air man that is a hack job, but it's pretty straight and up pretty well. And in, in a perfect world, I would have used my uh, DX Commander 10 meter pole. I did end up using, I got some tent stakes, a couple uh, lines just as guy wires, because what I did was I got the coax over to keep it parallel over to, one, to my other pole that's just not extended all the way. And all this is going up, it's about 50 feet of coax up to the second floor. I'll give you a rundown real quick. Um, so you can see it, I've got a, that's a beach umbrella spike that goes in the ground that's holding the pole up. Uh, we're about a meter off the ground where we start. So there's the bottom wire. I'm using the uh, QRP guys nine to one and I've got it in a baggie. I mean, it's, I'm gonna leave it out here for a few days. So if it rains, I give it a little bit of protection. I do have uh, my one to one ballon choke I got from Tim in 9SAB. And then there it is. 17.5 feet driven element vertical up at the top there. So pretty cool. I'm happy with how it came out. I'm not going to lie. I wrestled with it a little bit. That bottom pole broke apart a little bit. Had some things happen. But um, all in all, it came out pretty good. And honestly, doesn't look too bad. Oh, uh, yeah, the wire is a speaker wire. It's a 16-gauge speaker wire. So there it is. The, uh, I guess we'll call it the K4OGO Coastal 20. My first uh, experiment at designing something myself and see if it'll work. This might be a fail, guys. But maybe I'll hit onto something. We'll see. Really want to see how this thing will perform at home by salt water. When I'm not really up on the beach, you know, just a ways away from it. But a no radial vertical, kind of a random wire, kind of an off-center fed vertical dipole, kind of a Frank antenna. There it is. Let's go see how it works. Checking SWR on this thing, it, it, I was, uh, I hit the bullseye. You know, I, th I thought about originally maybe a four to one like the Ribicoff and I didn't know. So I, I, I put the nine to one, the, the, QRP guys, uh, nine to one that I had with me, I was thinking about building a random wire for QRP, but I said, hey, you know what, this thing will take 20 watts. So I put it together and um, I'll be using uh, my old faithful here, the uh, Zygu G90. And what I, what I did with the uh, internal analyzation tools, the G90 is I, I took a look at SWR and um, you know, for 20 meters, it was roughly uh, 2.9 to one, three to one in that area, um, 17, it was uh, just under uh, two to one uh, SWR. Um, 15, once again, was uh, under uh, two to one. Um, the 12 meter band kind of hovered around two to one. 10 meters, 10 meters was a little higher. It was right around four to one. But all of these are perfect for what I wanted because I wanted, you know, basically a random antenna that I could use my ATU, tune this thing with my Zygu G90 and, and make it work. 
Well, work it did. It worked well. It actually is exactly what I was looking for. And I, I was really pleased with how this thing turned out. Here are a few um, Accusos. But before I show you the Accusos, once again, I'm in Europe. And it seems like every weekend that I've been here, it's been a contest. There's a couple contests going on this weekend. And this is what I was up against. Sugar Papa. Sugar Papa. Inky Tango 3 XC contest. Sugar Papa. Sugar Papa. Sugar Papa. Sugar Papa. Sugar Papa. Well, it kind of sent me to uh, the 17 meter band and the 12 meter band, which is thing up. It performed well. I mean, I had some DX and a lot of things going on on both of those uh, bands, and I was pleased. Especially the 12 meter band with the Santana was just amazing. But um, yeah, I did it. I, I, I said, I guess if you can't beat them, join them. So I did jump in there on uh, 20, 15, and 10, and uh, I had to, you know, call. Yeah, jump in and play the contest game a little bit and uh, I did it with a few contacts uh, just to look at the performance and see if those bands work. Here's a few QSOs, just blurbs from a few QSOs from 10 meters up to 20 meters just to show you the performance of this antenna. USL, you are 5 and 9, 59 in Lampedusa Island. Thank you very much for coming back my call. My call is a special call to Radio Costal Italian, okay? Thank you very much. Sugar Peter, Stroke, Kido 4, Oscar, Golf, Oscar. This is India, India 9, India Golf, bravo, Roger. Okay, thank you very much for being your call. Sierra Papa slash Kilo 4, Oscar, Golf, Oscar, Mr. Walter, you didn't quit. You are 5 and 9, Roger. Sierra Papa Stroke, Kilo 4, Oscar, Golf, Oscar. IQSL, you're 59001. 001. IQSL. Thanks, 4 and 6, Fox Radio. IQSL, my fellow here. Sugar Papa, Kilo 4, Oscar Golf, Oscar. And I love the, uh, the videos of watching you in the States. They used to live in Texas, so I'm very familiar with uh, where you live, over. QSL, QSL, well, thank you so much for taking the call. It's a pleasure to talk to you, and thanks for activating. It's nice to get a, uh, a POTA into Wales. I think it's my first one. QSL. Uh, you are 5910011. Uh, QSL, you are 59007. 007, James Bond. QSL. Okay, James Bond, good luck. Echo 7 for America. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was fun. Uh, I've never been called 007 before, but uh, yeah, that was fun. That was a. Uh, you know, that's what uh, ham radio is all about. It's a lot of fun, too. And uh, those moments that you have sometimes with QSOs were pretty cool. So <laughs> I thought that was funny. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, actually my uh, last. And uh, la of, I went from uh, 001 to 007, and I was done. Had enough of the, uh, the contest uh, for the weekend there. But all in all, it was fun. Hey, a big shout-out, um, Chris, uh, G4HYG. Uh, sent me, he modeled this thing for me. He sent me an email, said, Hey, I modeled it. Look at this. And it was pretty awesome. I mean, it was kind of really close to what I was expecting and what I was looking for. So he sent me the uh, four NEC uh, two model, which I'll, I'm going to play around with and maybe perfect this thing a little more because I really want to put some time into this antenna, tweak it a little bit and make it better. But this thing really, for, for what I thought it would do as far as takeoff angles, uh, for DX and that type of thing. It was it was pretty close to spot on for what I was expecting. So thank you, Chris. Thanks for uh, the modeling uh, that you've done. I, he sent me the model file. I'm going to take it. When I get back to the States, I'll actually be able to, um, to get on uh, my modeling software and, and play around with it, maybe tweak it a little bit more, maybe raise it up a little higher. Uh, he was suggesting that. He said he was getting bigger number, better numbers for that, just to get it up a little bit to the top of uh, the, the DX Commander 10-meter uh, pole there. Anyway, that's the antenna. I'm going to play with it, uh, try to perfect it, uh, make it a little better maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's perfect now. We'll see. But um, 
in the future, I'm going to take it when I get to the beach and, and get back away um, from the uh, shore and, and see how it performs. I got a feeling it's going to be a pretty cool performer for DX. Uh, I go camping. Uh, sometimes we camp right by the seashore. And uh, I'm a good little bit, uh, you know, maybe uh, 150 meters away from the ocean there when I'm camping. So um, that's the antenna I was looking for, something that I could have fun with in doing that. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the video. If you did, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. I, I really do appreciate it. I, I try to uh, experiment and, uh, with antennas and play around. I'm, I'm learning, and uh, I hope you can come along and learn with me. A lot of you guys give me some really great advice. Um, like I said, my friend Tim, uh, G5TM, I, I, I probably bug him more than I should asking questions because he's really a knowledgeable guy. And uh, there are a lot of other really great knowledgeable people that subscribe to the channel that send me some really good stuff so i really do appreciate it anyway until next time i'm walt sierra papa stroke kilo for oscar golf oscar operating in portable in poland for just a couple more weeks and then i'll be back to the states see you soon my friends 73